I'm back with something a bit different. This is a PlayStation 2 I found in my apartment building's trash room. So just like me, this is a North American unit. It runs on 120 volts, and it seems to have found its way to Australia. But I ordered a new power supply from AliExpress. Um, it shipped in just a little baggy, and it, it got kind of crushed. So uh, I, hope, I hope it doesn't explode. Uh, so let's get it open and see if this fixes the issue. Okay, so we're at the bottom of the unit, and you have to remove these feet. Now, I've already done that. The rubber ones are easy. The plastic ones are a bit harder. You have to, like, pry them up with a flat head, but it's not too bad. Anyway, let's unscrew it and get inside. Okay, so I removed all the screws. Now I can flip it over and open it up. Okay, so the screws are out, and we're just going to open it up. So we'll just flip it over just like that, and we just kind of do that and just slide it off the memory cards like that and now we're inside next we need to unscrew the memory card and controller ports okay so now that that's done you can pull the whole unit out of its housing um so i'll just do that now just kind of give it a lift oh don't want that to come loose all right we got it out and now Power supply is on the other side, so now I gotta flip it over again. I'm really worried about that ribbon cable. Oh boy. Okay. All right. Hopefully that ribbon cable's fine. Okay, so here we are on the underside of the PlayStation 2. This is the original power supply here. Now that is a 125 volt fuse. I checked it, it did not blow, so Plugging in 240 didn't seem to cause this to explode, so I'm going to guess this is actually still a good board, but it's not working here, so there must be some protection circuitry to prevent it from exploding uh, when plugged into 240. So I'm going to need to disconnect it here, unscrew it, and install the new board. Okay, all the screws are removed, and now I should be able to lift the board out just like that. And easy. The board's out. Okay, now it's time to install our replacement AliExpress board. So let's just open it up. And we just, let's see here. So that those pins just kind of slide in there. Okay, I'm gonna try and set this in. It seems to be a bit finicky. Let's see. That seems right, it just doesn't seem flush. Something's stopping it from sitting flush. Okay, so the board's installed. Um, I noticed the PCB wasn't completely like flat, but I think that's just kind of how the board is. I think it's a little warped. Hopefully it doesn't cause any issues. Um, but yeah, also keep in mind, uh, if you do plan on installing one of these, there are multiple revisions of the PlayStation 2 power supply. This one's on this side, and I think the other one's on this side. Anyway, let's get it uh, sealed back up and see if it explodes or works. Okay, so I've plugged it in, um, it's on in the back, I just need to switch it on on my power board. So I'll be right back. And it's in standby. And it turns on, ooh. That's not a good sound, oh, it's a disk drive. But it works! Um, barring the disk drive. Oh. Ooh. Jeez. That's not a good sound. Whoa! Night at the museum! Score! And it's a bootleg, I think. Is this real? This doesn't look real. Yeah, that's definitely not real. So, it came with a bootleg copy of Night at the Museum. Sick! Okay, so I've sealed it back up. The feet are back on. The disk drive seems to have stopped making grinding sounds. 
Uh, I just don't have AV cables. So I'm gonna go order those and we'll check back in a few days and see if it outputs video. And if that's the case, I'm gonna go put a hard drive in this and I'll have a PlayStation 2. So I took a gamble and I bought all the needed accessories to make this PlayStation work. And I even got it working with a Switch controller, which is a bit sacrilege, but it is working. Um, that was all I need to do. I need to convert it from a North American power supply to an Australian one. Uh, and I got this delightful Minecraft homebrew working. Uh, the unit seems to be in mostly working condition. The DVD drive seems a bit fried, but it seems to play CDs perfectly fine. Uh, the clock battery's dead, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. It's, it's you know, I'm getting use out of it, so. Uh, put a lot of money and time into it, but hey, that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll replace that clock battery and look into the DVD drive later, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. So, welcome to the collection. See ya. Bye.